nobody wants to go through the whole entire roller coaster or whatever of of positive change because it has to get worse before it gets better so but we're all like that is the politicians that everything. is the politicians dilemma is every single one who comes in knows that there's this major decision that has to be made in order for them to get back on track whether it be budget or planning or whatever but in order to do it they got to take all those you know nimbies and or they got to take all that you know hate from the other side of the aisle or whatever it is that they have to go through in order to get there and it risks their you know political agenda and so they end up not doing it because they're scared they're cowards Cowards. and nothing gets done they he says they like what are you doing well, I'm just saying, and no, the politicians who have all the, who have of the power, us. they don't we have as any a society power. Is at the same way. I completely we're a bunch agree. of we're vaginas, all of us. We're a bunch of pussies. Nobody does anything. We just sit here on YouTube and talk. All of us. Yeah. Although TK, I mean, we do discuss solutions from time to time. Once in a while, which is a step in the right direction. Mouth. I'm like, right? damn, that sounded good. So talking about the solutions, I said, okay. So we all recognize that there's all kinds of issues, right? I mean. Now, okay, what do you, did you hear about our mayor while you were away? I heard about the mayor. Actually, I okay. heard about that like on the beach. Uh, so were you like, were there like fellow Canadians on the beach that you like met on the plane? And you're like, did you did you hear? We about were John Tory? we were what we were hell? we were gossiping. You were gossiping about we were John gossiping. Tory on the beach yeah. in Punta Cana. Well, that's yeah. good. So so uh, were they were they prospective clients, TK? Uh, everybody's perspective client everybody <laughs> they have my card that's for yeah. sure okay so what is like people are a little nervous in the in the real estate market about john tory no longer being the mayor because he was a big advocate of pumping out a lot of housing so um like there's big problems our leader has jumped chipped or been knocked off the plank or, or we don't know what's going to cover that what story, you want to call that yeah. right we have we, we got to touch on all this because there's a big picture here okay we have people we have a giant developer going bankrupt in vancouver that nobody really seems to be talking about a 700 million dollar default okay yeah. we we have uh, Bed Bath and Beyond going out of business and closing all these giant locations that Rio Can says they're positioned well to absorb, but like, but when you drive by a Rio Can Plaza and you see these retail vacancies, you're going, whoa, wait a second, that looks right? a little strange. And, and there's and, a lot of them. And and one more that I just want to throw in the mix because yeah. like. We're seeing all we this great growth and everything's on fire and all this goodness right now, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got all these companies going out of business. You got all these tech layoffs. And now you got Shopify and Amazon talking about coming together in an alliance to, I guess, save Shopify. Uh, they were like mortal enemies last year. And they must see like a dramatic, like shift that they would be willing all of a sudden to to do something so extreme so like mm -hmm. there's a lot in that but like what the fuck like what in this big macro craziness with wars and 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 inflation going back up and rates going up and all 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 this crazy stuff that should be pushing markets down, even in the pandemic, like we had the biggest bubble of all time when we all thought it would crash. Mm -hmm. Like, what is causing this pandemonium, this FOMO, these like people at four, five, six percent to be rushing in, making firm offers in multiple offer scenarios again? The need for housing. And there and 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 look, I'm gonna say this right now, and it's completely contradictive to things that I have said in the past. And I'm okay. That to me, I I learn from things that I say, and I grow as a human being. And I have no shame in saying this. Shame. Immigration will play more of a factor. Shame. Immigration will play more of a factor in this scenario than ever before in the past. This is the this is the yeah. new this is the new storyline. This yeah. is what everybody there's, is there's, saying there's again. There's so now. much more. There's so much more attention on Toronto now as a city, as a global city. Who posted that um, the other day? I think it was Nick. He put it on his Instagram. He put an old 1992 uh, newscast. No, 1988 newscast 
of like a, you know, Toronto's this new city and all these jobs are coming in and people are trying to move to the city, but you know, they can't afford a house and they're return they're refusing jobs because they they say it's just too expensive to live there. And the average house is 330,000. Oh my God. Toronto was never such a huge metropolis before. It wasn't as attractive in the past when we went through this correction. Sure. In the early 90s, it was it was a big city, but it had just become a big city. It had just become what it is today, a major Born. financial hub and everything yeah. else. That's when it was growing at that rate. And it's now been on steroids for 30 years, right? Growing and, and the jobs and the and the uh, headquarters and, and the global attention and all that kind of stuff. Immigration. So when, we bring in, when we bring in that many people, the percentage of people who are moving to the GTA is way higher than ever before, right? Out of the total, you're saying the percentage the, the of people moving to the GTA is higher than normal, is higher than ever than than when we were dealing with a market correction and immigration, because that's what everyone's saying. Like, well, back in 1980, which is what people I've been are saying, going back to the 1930s. And I've been saying, saying it, like I'm exactly so I've been immigration saying it because stopped. the data always shows that immigration is not a factor in a, a growing in a falling housing market. It does. It shows that. But I think that this time will be a little bit different and that there's going to start to be more of an uh, of a uh, issue in the major hubs because everyone's going to be attracted to Vancouver and Toronto, top two cities, then Montreal, obviously. Then there's going to be a huge outflow of people that are native to those cities and people who maybe come for a couple of years who will then be going to these other cities like Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Saskatoon. And, you know, these other great cities in Toronto, in Canada that I can't I can, can't name right now off the top of my head. Because they don't really exist. Moncton, yeah. St. John, you know, all these areas. You're, you'll get a little bit of growth in those cities, which will maintain those housing markets more than what they have in the past. It's a factor. 